What's up YouTube? In this video, this is going to be about uh, Pentax Image Sync. You know, the wonderful software. I've heard a lot of complaints about it. I've heard some people who love it. Some people who think it's meh, okay. You know, it's okay software. Not, not so good, but it's okay. Uh, so, since I'm borrowing the K12, I figured Got to download the image sync and uh, see what all the fuss is about. Is it actually good? What did they get right? What things can it be? What things can be improved on? And uh, let's just dive right into it and get right to the meat and potatoes. Or if you're vegetarian, I guess the lettuce and kale. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's just get right down to it. Blah! Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously turn the Wi-Fi on right uh, and then what you may have to do for the first time you set this up is actually go into the Wi-Fi settings at which point you will get all the information you need when you go into communication info once you're in communication info you'll see there's a password that you need to enter in order for the app to connect properly so let's uh, dive into the app itself and get that going so the first thing that you'll want to do is connect to the app's Wi-Fi. So in order to do that, what you need to do is go into your settings and look for the Pentax Wi-Fi. Where are we? There you are. Now I've already connected before, so I don't need to put the actual password in. It'll just automatically connect as you can see there. Alright, let's close that down. and. Let's go to the app, Image Sync. Let's go into. Okay, now it's going to ask me. <laughs> now it's going to ask me for that password. Oh, whoops, I'm not using a KP. What am I saying? K1 Mark II. Oh, okay. Didn't actually ask me for the password. Nice. Okay, and there we go. And as you move the camera around, oh, pretty good. Move, get to move the camera around, and shows a real-time view of the camera moving. It's perfect. So let's uh, click something here. And yeah, I had my phone laying on the table, and it seems to get confused as to which way to rotate. It's pretty jumpy. So let's uh, just click and focus on something here. And you can already see that there's an issue. <laughs> it just wouldn't focus up there. So it seems to be limited in regards to the focus areas that you can pick and there's no way for you to know on the screen which actual way that's going to work, um, which is really too bad. Let's try moving this back. Yeah, I mean, it's not, uh, it is limited as to where it will let you click. And it does seem to be a bit laggy in some elements. Like you click, but there's no... Yeah, see? It didn't even try to focus. There we go. Yeah, so I mean, it's not... It's not the worst thing I've seen. It's okay. However, yes, there are some bugs that do need to be worked out, obviously. And this little black square just off to the left, there we go. So the image did show up. Let's, uh, let's change the exposure compensation, brighten it up a little bit. There we go. Take that shot. Yeah. 
So it's not too, too bad. Um, I did see something earlier. Uh, let's see, camera images. And I did see something about video. Uh, where was it? Display the movie. Not sure exactly what that does because I don't see anywhere where you can actually use this to record a movie. Like if I change the setting on the camera, it kicks you out of the app. Like it, it just it doesn't work. There is no movie capable option at all for the app, which is I think is too bad. But overall this isn't the worst thing in the world. It does take a while to download the images though. That, like straight up, it, it takes a while. Oh, and I can't just go in here to get back to the images. Okay, well, that's great. So I can't do that. So does that mean I have to take another picture? Okay, and now that I've taken a picture, now I can go back. That's really bizarre. Okay. You really want to see how long it takes to transfer a raw file? Okay, you know what, let's just do it. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Let's download. And you'll see we're at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so this does take a while to actually transfer an image from the camera. It, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop it. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. But that's really pretty much image sync in a nutshell. I mean, it does have some good features. It does have some more things that could be better implemented, um, in, especially in comparison to the competition. But generally speaking... At least on my phone with the K12, it does work pretty well. Uh, and I could see this as actually being something useful uh, when, when you're shooting at you know varying angles and whatnot. It's easier to just use the phone, have the camera in some crazy wild angle that you wouldn't normally be able to get even with a flip screen or anything. So uh, yeah, if you do have a Wi-Fi capable Pentax camera, you know, do definitely check out the image sync. Um, you know, even in a pinch, it's still, I think it's worth it. Yeah, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell, uh, in regards to the Pentax Image Sync. It is a, it is a useful tool, um, and it's limited, but, you know, in a pinch, I can see it actually being of, uh, benefit if you do happen to have a Pentax camera with Wi-Fi. So with that said, if you like the video, leave a like. If you have not already, please do subscribe. It helps me out as well as any other YouTube channels you're following, you know, subscribe to them. That came out wrong because if you're already following them you don't have to subscribe other youtube videos and stuff you find online that you happen to like do subscribe to them it does help us out and uh, if you'd like to support the channel i'll leave that information at the bottom of the description if you have any questions comments leave them down below and y'all see me on my next video i'm out